Hi, Thomas. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Are you ready to uh, show us some uh, some great stuff around NVIDIA and AMD virtual machines options on, on Azure for WVD? Yes, of course I am. And you okay. see my presentation? Yeah, I can see it. So take it away when you're ready. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, thanks. Uh, welcome to my, my session. Uh, I'm going to cover the, the new uh, NVIDIA and AMD uh, virtual machine with GPU options for, for WVD. Uh, so first of all, uh, to do a short introduction who I'm, my name is Thomas uh, Poppelgaard. Uh, I'm an MVP in the WVD and IDS, and I work a lot with end-user computing and blog about that on my blog, poppelgaard.com. I've been doing that for, for actually a decade. Um, and I'm part of many different kind of awards, so I work close with the, the vendors from uh, Microsoft, uh, the WD team to NVIDIA and uh, Citrix and VMware. And I also work together with some of the communities uh, with Team RGE, with our remote and graphic experts, and uh, login VSI and, uh, and uh, Parallels. So, bunch of stuff and uh, that means I'm fully committed to the community and I'm pretty excited to, to share with you guys uh, what I have about GPUs. Uh, yeah, and that's one last thing. If you guys want to, you don't follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is underscore publical. As you can see there on the left with the Twitter handle. And yeah, I'm Danish, so that's probably the, the funny accent. Let's see here, whoops. Oh, okay. So GPUs, why do we need them? Um, yeah, so many people, they think uh, GPUs are typical use for, for high performance. Uh, and that's in majority of cases also pretty, pretty right. Uh, when we look at WD, uh, well, what drives people for, for actually for, for, the, for adding GPUs for, for Windows Virtual Desktop is uh, when they have quite have high graphic demands. So when people are designing uh, products in Adobe Photoshop uh, or Adobe, Adobe, different Adobe products, um, that requires quite high uh, graphical demand. And also when pop people are designing uh, the next uh, uh, products, uh, products design, engineering design, but even stuff like uh, financial uh, and, and people who are doing trader, stuff all that stuff is is quite high demanding and, and does need uh, graphics um but uh, what about people when they're doing uh, gpus uh, is this just for these kind of people so uh, christian uh, uh, has been leading this vdi like a pro uh, and i know they're running a new survey as well so it'd be interesting to see the 2020 real results but this is the survey from from last year uh, where we can see that the majority of all the people that they are actually uh, adding a GPU for, for virtual uh, desktop environments to give a better overall, uh, overall, overall performance. So uh, that is quite interesting. So most people uh, when working on-prem, when they're doing you know stuff there, they add GPU and understand why they do that. And uh, for WD, I think that's also quite important that we start understanding why do we need GPUs. So uh, Lakeside, they have made these analysis between the different operating system where they have captured data between tons of customers around the world. And there they could see the, the, the DirectX is getting more and more utilized between the different versions from Windows 7 to next version of Windows 10 and, and etc. So each time a new version of actually Windows 10, we're seeing, we're actually seeing a higher demand. And that means also when you're doing stuff like EVD, right, that you will you know, potentially get a, a, a decreasement of users if you don't uh, add uh, the graphics uh, in it. And that's because uh, graphics is, is a, you know, part of the operating system. What it does when you switch between windows and, you know, you take the window and move it around, all that stuff is actually users rising. And, and if it doesn't have a GPU, then it does CPU and it does stuff for rasterize and does impact on that. So something where you can start, and I think it's quite important, is actually take physical machines uh, before you do uh, Windows versus desktop uh, for GPUs and understand uh, the averages, what you have for GPU and what you're doing with so GPU uh, memory and GPU compute, and also look at the peaks. 
<clears throat> because two, those two fingers are, I mean, two numbers are quite important. Um, people intend to look, to look only at their averages, but people who actually really do, do understand GPUs, uh, uh, they, they know that the peaks are super important. And this is actually where this can be the critical part on why do you want the experience, why you need that specific expensive GPU that uh, validates the work you're doing so you're able to do this quickly work in time. Um, but the admin is actually something that's quite uh, easy to go in uh, out of the box Windows 10, uh, even Server 2019. Uh, GPUs can be looked inside Task Manager out of the box. And here you can actually see what the GPU is doing uh, with the performance. So you can see utilization for GPU compute and also GPU memory. And, and you can see uh, information uh, such as driver and so on. This is important stuff when you're validating, do I need a GPU? Uh, especially when you move into Windows version desktop. Uh, and you know if you just take the, the cheap ones, then you're doing CPU. And of course, then you don't GPU, do, you do GPU. But if you move your stuff from on-prem to WVD, always go in and say, do I need the GPU? And <clears throat> the task manager is, is great for, for that kind of stuff. Another one, a quick win, is uh, the Process Explorer. So Process Explorer is a free tool uh, from System Internals from Microsoft that gives you tremendous knowledge about what you can get. And actually here, this is actually from a WD sessions I have here. Uh, so this is how I have the brand new AMD GPU. And here we can actually see the browsers, uh, Microsoft Edge. Uh, is actually the one and and the top. And I'm not doing any fancy. I'm just opening up, uh, you know, website uh, like CNN. There's nothing on special on it. And even here, it's actually using, you know, out of the basic stuff. Uh, I'm using uh, the GPU memory, and this is, uh, you know, just uh, some applications that are running. And we see also Office 365 is consuming uh, GPU. This is a very low number. But again, here you give an indication on which process is using GPU and you can do this for free because you can run the, the, this application uh, inside your uh, your Windows virtual desktop with the GPU and get that uh, that number. So this is really, really great insight if you have not tried it out before. So understanding your GPUs is, is something I cannot say enough is uh, the more we understand, uh, you know, is a GPU compute and it all depends again, again on the application and how you work. Uh, some other applications that use GPU memory more or less. And again, this is so important when you choose the, the right uh, GPU profile in, uh, in Azure. Another thing as well is these uh, GPU uh, technologies uh, that are being used is uh, we have DirectX, we have Vulkan, we have WebGL, OpenGL, and, and NVIDIA has CUDA, and then there's OpenCL. These things are actually quite critical when people are taking the, the right kind of, you know, applications and do they need these kind of uh, different technologies that GPUs are offering. So identifying this when you're moving is actually can be critical, especially for, for, for companies who are, who are adopting this. And, uh, and I know this is not something that typical, you know, the, the normal user look at, but when you go into the GPU, if you can try to actually identify it, it will definitely help you validate even further why you need specific GPUs for your application. So something is, uh, I can, again, the first step is to do assessment on your physical machine, and you can use, again, Process Explorer Task Manager for that. Uh, you can also use uh, industry tools like uh, uh, these uh, vendors here, and I'll actually cover them a little bit little later. So assessing the GPU, you know, over time, where you capture the data, one, two, three, four weeks, uh, then you're getting actually, you know, a good indication on typical user patterns, uh, and this helps when you're architecting. Now, a trend as well is, let's say you're moving to a new operating system, new uh, version of Office 365, and so on. These things are changing all the time, and this is why it's so important that we keep on doing it, assessing. Uh, the environments so we can can, can provide the right uh, instant type for for the for the usage. 
the same happening with the browsers. Uh, there's this browser war happening with Microsoft. You know, they have the Edge Chromium base now, uh, and we have Firefox and, and Chrome and Opera, right? And these applications, they use also GPU. So this is an example I'm just showing you from Process Explorer, right, where uh, the four different browsers are using GPU, and they use it very different how they, they use the, the, the GPU memory and, and compute. So your website will work different how they how they're working, um, and this is why you can't just say you know that how the pad how the behavior will be with the with the application. It will be different. Each each uh, of these applications will, will behave different, and of course this is how they are optimized uh, with with the operating system. Seems is another one which is also uh, consuming a lot of uh, actually graphics and why do they do that yeah well they are doing a lot of stuff when it comes to visualizing what they're doing and we both have video and we have audio and you know there's a lot of stuff and this can actually be be improved uh, by by with adding gpus so i will cover that a little bit more uh, and this uh, i think is a quite important one for wd um, so microsoft is doing a lot of stuff when it comes to optimization for the wd protocol they have now done uh, optimization with encoding and video optimization and the, gra the graphics they have uh, optimized and uh, rendering. Now they're using all the GPUs out of the box uh, and they can also use the GPU uh, load balancing and they can, they can improve scalability and high frame rate uh, with a reduced latency. Um, that means they're getting more and more intelligent uh, with what they're doing with the, with the encoding. It, and this is really, really beneficial for, for, for customers who are using uh, WVD, uh, the native. Uh, the, also, the codec is now uh, is adaptable and it does motion detection and progressive image encoding uh, and clear codec for text content uh, and clear side caching and frame from different codecs. I've turned this image together and there's also 4K dynamic downsampling. Great things for, for improving the, the user experience. And, and things you probably potentially don't think about, you know, you just say, wow, this experience is is, is amazing with WVD. Uh, but this is because the team uh, behind, uh, you know, all the PGs, uh, they, they are working very hard in improving uh, these uh, uh, technologies with WVD. And we also see improvement with the video playback optimization where they're doing uh, hardware encoding, video encoding, and they have improved with the video window move uh, and also the AVC 444 V2 improvement for HTML5. And uh, of course, also now do AVC uh, for full screen profiling. So this is really great that uh, the WD team is doing that uh, because that helps us, you know, adapt more WD. Um, now, when you start doing Windows Virtual Desktop, also one of the things is single session or multi session. That, that is really the question. So do we want to do a single session or do we want to do multi session? And it all it all depends, right? So each application actually have caveats. So um, I see many people right now uh, where they intend everybody moving to the multi session Windows 10 because that is the next, you know, it's free and you potentially move away. You don't have to pay money for RDS licenses from your RDS or environment. You get, you know, the great uh, feature richness for Windows 10, but that can also be a caveat, and that can actually be with application who doesn't support it. It might work, but it might not be supported. And I think it's so really critical that we start waking up more and and, and ask the question because will the different uh, uh, you know are the software vendors actually supporting it? The multi session potentially, potentially you can actually. Uh, be in an unsupported state, and that's very important. That when that you then make sure your application is supported in the multi-session uh, state. Um, and I'll come back to that. So uh, something that Microsoft also they they do recommend GPUs for WD uh, for the Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, uh, and you can see in it in the docs they have the vGPU. So I'm, I'm actually quite excited that that, that GPU is uh, is is mentioned. And, and this is again something that's uh, quite important is, do we not need the GPU or not? So what are the caveats by using uh, or support GPUs with WD? 
uh, if you look at the docs, you can actually see that uh, they support different versions, like Windows 10, Ultra version 15, 11, the new one, 2016. And then I'm like, wait, WD isn't that also supposed to be supporting Windows 7 and 2012 R2? Yes, it is. So uh, actually, NVIDIA, they do support Windows 7 and 2012 R2 uh, with the drivers. Uh, but the AMD uh, NVD4 instance doesn't support uh, the Windows 7 and 2012 R2. So just to summary up all that, that actually we do see a difference here between the NV NVIDIA and AMD, where the NVIDIA is supporting actually all the different offerings that VD have with the offering system, or the different operating system types, uh, where uh, AMD uh, is, is limited. And that's then, you know, if you get confused and you read the lines here, this is why I'm just trying to help them guide you a little bit better in the WD world. Another thing is when you start then working is uh, and you you create a new instance in Azure with the WD and you it's very important you install the driver. You can't automate this uh, uh, from from the portal uh, so that you, there is intelligence where you can make it actually make it more more simpler. Uh, but uh, if you just install manually, you know, make a new golden image, which a majority of customers are doing, then it's very important. The first thing you need to do is then install the driver with the NVIDIA. The AMD uh, is also the same thing. Just make sure the driver is there, the latest driver is there, validate it is there. And, and you know, you can see that in the device manager and uh, see the uh, GPU driver is uh, recognized. Another thing that is important is that you need to go in and uh, enable these uh, GPOs uh, because by default, uh, uh, applications and desktops are running multi-session configuration are rendered with the CPU and do not leverage availability of uh, GPU for rendering. Uh, you know, this has been like fun rule number one for RDS environments. Uh, same fun rule what goes for, for Windows 10 multi-session. So you have to configure this, uh, use hardware graphics adapter for, for, for remote desktop sessions and enable it uh, because it's not enabled by default. Uh, the other thing what you need to do is uh, enable this GPO uh, for full screen AVC uh, 444 uh, and uh, enable to prioritize uh, the AVC 44 graphics mode for uh, remote desktop connection and also configure the, the hardware encoding. And these are the two uh, policies you do for that. Um, what are the most ca cases uh, we, you know, when do we start as well with the use cases for, for single VDI? When is the right place to, to start? Um, again, it all depends uh, on uh, uh, with the session, if there's a high potential of single user or scribing CPU or GPU capacity, um, if people are getting bad experience, uh, but again, single single use of VDI is many time, uh, if you want to be in the safe side and with the ISV, right? Uh, it is out of the box certified for, for single session uh, for virtualized in most cases. But when you do it to multi-session, then you, you really need to make sure that your ISV is supporting multi-session scenario. The application might work, but you potentially may, might not be supporting, you be running in an unsupported state. Um, and the, the, you know most high-end graphic applications, they are designed to uh, achieve uh, high utilization and efficient performance scaling out of the all GPU resources. Um, and this is how they are, uh, are designed. Um, the question is also, you know, I see people typically that they ask me is, you know, is my application supporting with Windows Session Windows 10? And surprise. Uh, Autodesk actually don't support when multi session Windows 10. Uh, does the application work? Yes, it does work. Uh, but you're on your own risk. That means if you create a support ticket and you know you potentially will get a problem. So that's pretty important that you make sure your ISV is supporting your environment. Uh, because maybe your application is working really great and I've seen it working phenomenal, but you are. Uh, you know, running in an unsupported state. So other use cases for, for, 
uh, WD multisession. Uh, it's great for, for interactivity, immersive use cases, uh, because uh, uh, we do support most of all the GPI, uh, GPU API calls like DirectX, OpenGL, WebGL, Vulkan, and so on. Um, but again, it, it all depends. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I if it was me personally, I would love to use the Windows multi-session Windows uh, for for high graphics every single time because uh, you get the you know the uh, most cost-effective solution and you can get great user experience. But you're also fighting for resources, and and this is why I can tell you why all of this also support single session. You know because we want dedicated performance. And when, when you're having multiple sessions, you're actually fighting for performance, uh, which potentially can be, you know, in an unsupported state. Uh, but again, yeah. So let's talk about how do you enable the, the graphics in, in WD. So in, in Azure, we have uh, NVIDIA and AMD. And I will talk a little about what NVIDIA has uh, for Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, so the offering is what you can uh, do for uh, supporting uh, GPU-enabled uh, VMs uh, for all, any kind of worker, knowledge worker, creative worker, or high-end uh, professionals. You can use uh, uh, NVIDIA. They they offer the instance both from uh, from the marketplace, or you can also bring in uh, your own licenses as well. Uh, some customers actually do that. Uh, or you can also use uh, that, especially with the the NV6 instances. Those actually, uh, the NV and NV V3, they do do include uh, um, the, the the GPU license. Uh, and when I mean the license, so uh, what they have uh, out of the box is uh, uh, for for one instance, actually you get access to one uh, quarter license and. Uh, if you uh, run in, in a multi-session environment uh, state, then you can also have one, but uh, you can also use the vApps, which is 25 uh, concurrent uh, users. Now, that thing I'm not going to cover so much now here. I know this is one thing I'm going to cover later, but uh, I know Microsoft is also working on, on clearing up the messaging on this part, uh, but that means that there are some uh, things uh, that potentially are confusing how you're using uh, the right GPU instances for it, for the right profile and and you know um, uh, to be compliant uh, to be honest. Uh, so how the different instances are are, are tiered up uh, with with the profiles are here are uh, again uh, what Nvidia is doing here they are not using the vGPU technology here they're using uh, so uh, DDA. From, from the Azure, you get access to, to a physical GPU, and you know it's uh, one, two, uh, or, or four instances uh, you get the, by that. And with the new instance they have in the the NV twelve uh, S V uh, three uh, is actually a newer CPU, uh, so a, a faster CPU and a memory attack with that. So you get the benefits of that. And the great thing is uh, Microsoft has actually a Sorry, include uh, they have really, um, a, a, yeah. There's many, many new regions where they have uh, covered now the, the instant types and and more are coming. Uh, um, so the NV series has been the one that's been using for for for, for a long time, and the NV V3 is is the next generation, right? Uh, which is still in the 60s in, in both of them being used here. But here's the newest CPU we have. Um, and, I, and yeah, so I highly recommend that you go in and look at okay, where are you, uh, and you know where do you have access to, and then then you use uh, the the right instance type of that. You can also use the Azure ND series, uh, which is the the P40 GPU, and uh, here you have uh, again uh, from one up to four GPUs, um, and again uh, you know four GPUs. Again, some people where they say, hey, this might be great for, for use cases like multi-session, right? Because that one can take care of actually of all the GPUs with the encoding. They are doing that uh, out of the box. Um, so, you know, if you want to have a lot of users into that, uh, then it, it all depends on, on what you want to do. 
Um, so what what is recommended for for typical for WD and the NVIDIA uh, GPU instance in Azure is that for single session OS, uh, the NV6 and the NV12 V3 uh, is the typical uh, recommended uh, GPUs for that. And uh, for for multi-session uh, on Windows Server, uh, larger VMs, um, you know, uh, recommended for that for when we're talking about uh, larger and uh, multiple GPUs. So two and four, um, if you want to have up to to a lot of people running out of, and you can, with the Eula, you can actually run up to, to you know, 100 uh, concurrent users uh, on, on the large ones. So the four, and that's the four, the, the reason why I say four, so each per physical GPU, you are licensed with the VApps for NVIDIA having 25 concurrent. So, you know, with the, um, with the N, uh, ND24IS, which is actually, we can see the four GPUs, this is actually uh, four times 25 license, so that's 100, and that's why I say 100 licenses, uh, the user sessions. Um, another thing, uh, what uh, actually this is something that is pretty fresh. So uh, NVIDIA together with Microsoft, they have uh, run a lot of uh, workloads and they have uh, this new NVIDIA benchmark tool uh, where they have been capturing data and they've been doing, using different kind of applications. I'm only going to focus on one application here. So here with Cisco WebEx, they have two sessions running on screen sharing, running a YouTube video. And we can see uh, down on the left, uh, the NV12 uh, V3 is using uh, uh, actually, uh, I would say a little bit over the half uh, compared to the D8V S V3 uh, with CPU utilization. And that definitely benefits on how you can see GPU with Cisco WebEx, you know, which is a very popular application here with the COVID-19. Uh, and uh, that means you can have more users uh, by, by you know uh, offloading CPU and then doing GPU utilization uh, with both memory and and video encoding, and you can see here again with two screens, right? You you are actually not utilizing the GPU heavily, so that means a lot of use can be on, and the CPU also get more brief. That means more uses on it, right? Uh, if again, if you want to read more about it, uh, so then this is one the Dennis Gundrov. Senior uh, PM of the Microsoft MBD, uh, together with uh, Manvenda Ravak from NVIDIA, they made this really, really great session where they go very advanced into what they've done. And I highly recommend you guys go in and uh, download uh, the PDF, but you can also go in actually and, and watch the recording. So, again, this is just got released here the other day. So, just to cover up uh, the, the NVIDIA, what they have there, the offering. So, uh, what you can do with, again, traditional, what has been very popular uh, for, for a while has been the, the M60. So the M60 GPU, where you have an M NV6, so one GPU or NV12, two GPUs, NV24, four GPUs, and then you can use, you know, uh, the majority of Windows, uh, 2000, Windows so 2012 or two, or 2016 or 2019, having multiple sessions or doing also even one-to-one, -one, right? Some some people also do that. Or you can also use Windows 7, Windows 10, or Windows 10 multi session uh, together with that with the uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. And the other thing, what you can do again, you can use the new generation. So this is the NV6 V3, uh, where we have um, it's a premium supporting premium disk, and we then we have uh, supporting. Uh, a newer generation of the CPU, so that's why uh, I actually, to be honest, I highly, I highly recommend. Uh, you know, you get uh, more speed uh, with the CPU, and you also get uh, support with the premium disk. So that's actually great things, uh, and then you can support uh, these operating systems together with WD. So let's look a little bit. What? Uh, whoops! I think I just. Uh, there was one more actually. So uh, the other options I have here is the NVIDIA, is the P40, and there's also the NVIDIA P100 and uh, and the, the V100. So you can actually also use these instances uh, together with uh, with Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, 
And again, uh, this is also what typical you can go in and bring your own license and, 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 and spin up these machines here. Next thing I want to cover is the AMD for the Microsoft Windows Virtual Desktop. So this is a pretty new uh, a GPU that got available and been in preview since, uh, you know, in the last year and got available here in March. And uh, also uh, public preview for, for, for Azure Stack. So um, that means uh, you can go and read, uh, have wrote a blog about what, the, what this uh, GPU is. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, but I do want to cover, you know, what what is under the hood. So this GPU is an MI25 uh, AMD Radeon Instinct, uh, which has 16 gigabyte memory frame buffer and uh, has a lot of shader compute uh, with 24.6 gigaflops, and uh, it supports SRIOB, uh, which is MX GPU and GPU P. So SRIOV, uh, the PCI SCI chain, uh, means you're actually taking a, a part of GPU. Uh, so you can have up to eight virtual machines per per, per GPU uh, by by counting up the, the you know the frame buffer uh, because yeah, it's hardware slicing. Uh, so that means for one VM and you get a GPU, that means one user. You can also have one session, and then it's multiple multiple users sharing. Uh, uh, you know that GPU that is dedicated for 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 that machine, um, and that means uh, out of the box the judge guest always recognize the GPU as pass through device, and uh, the memory is wiped between content switches. Um, so yeah, again each virtual function is given a dedicated ASLIC slice of the GPU memory, and that means uh, you know. You're getting what you're expecting uh, of this, this GPU, and you get also full uh, driver with the Radeon Pro uh, graphics driver when you install it. It works uh, uh, out of the box, where you then get access to to all the libraries uh, what the, what the GPU is, is supporting. So you know this is why this new stuff is kind of a like switch army knife because now we're doing SRI, we and we're cutting up the GPU, uh, and that also means the price is actually getting. You know, we don't we we don't get access more to a full physical GPU. Now we're cutting it up, and that means actually it's getting cheaper. And and yeah, so you know, a uh, good friend Marius Sandberg up from Norway, he see that this is one going to be one of the GPU is going to be one of the recommended for VDI projects moving going forward. Um, so again, you know, uh, I would say everything depends. Um, so let's look at what the in instant types are. So the standard NV4, uh, AS V4 on the left, has a two gigabyte uh, mem GPU memory partition. And the next instant, the 8 AS has a four gigabyte GPU partitioning. And then the 16 AS has an eight gigabyte GPU partitioning. And then the 32 AS has a 16 gigabyte partitioning, which is a full GPU, right? And this is how the great thing here is here we're seeing actually. In, so this is both the AMD Epic and the AMD Radeon Instinct. So everything's like AMD CPU, GPU here. You know, and we get from from the, the nice thing is we're getting the CPUs and the memory following up and not going you know totally crazy. So you you, you can get exactly what you need. And I, to be honest, this I, I really really like this uh, what they have put together here. I would say the sweet spot here when I, when I look at the stuff is I would probably say that's the NV8. And why? Because that's also typical where you have in laptops today is 4 gigabyte uh, GPU memory frame buffer. And, and and you know, but uh, and said a lot of people, they go down and choose the cheapest ones. So they choose the NV4 AS and then they start doing testing on that. But hey, you, you only have a 2 gigabyte frame buffer. Keep in mind, you don't have such a big frame buffer for that. And um, so it's really, really important that you choose the right instance for when you're doing testing. Now, if it was me, my recommendation for you guys is go in, make sure you test with a bigger instance instead of a smaller one, because you can have it actually, to be honest, you could have a worse experience by using the lowest uh, GPU instance. So I think it's very important for POCs that you test with a higher one and then you capture data, find out what you need, and then you move down for pilot production. 
So reference architecture wise, right? And this is the ones I put together. So you have all the different four types and here you can support uh, Windows 10 or, or Windows 10 multi-session or Windows 0 2016 or 2019 together with Windows uh, Virtual Desktop with the new uh, AMD NVV4 uh, instances. Another thing uh, where you can G deploy GPUs uh, for automatically uh, is Cloud Jumper, they're doing it, and Nerdio, they have it, so that's really, really nice. They have full integration to the Azure instances. Uh, also, Marcel, uh, which has a session later, a good friend of mine, has made this amazing tool, the WD admin, uh, where he can go in and provision, he can provision machines, and uh, because he has provisioning built in uh, with image deployment, and then you can choose the different instances with, with you know, uh, the NVIDIA, the AMD GPUs, and, and then you can provision and scale machines with WD, which is phenomenal. Um, let's look at some of the use cases and, and the profiling for, for, for WD. And uh, here are covering some of the, the, the third party uh, vendors out there, so from Control Up, Stratosphere, Easy Innovation, Lakeside, and Uber Agent. Some of these, uh, the majority are uh, WD partners, but I also can see that some of them actually are not. So the important thing I want to want to share with you guys is it's so important that you actually monitor your applications over time. And I cannot say it enough. You need to monitor your application over time because application changes how you work. So control up what they can do. They have uh, actually made integration inside to uh, to the NVIDIA. They don't have it to the AMD, but they can actually look at the, the, the NVIDIA APIs. So if you're running the, the NVIDIA in in Azure, you can see the visibility with, with the process, uh, both actually the GPU, uh, but you can also see the frame buffer and you can see uh, which process is, is using it. And you can also see encoding and decoding for that. So that's pretty phenomenal. Another one uh, is Stratosphere from Liquidware. They have the UX, and here they can go in, actually they can look at both Intel AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, but when you look at uh, the stuff that's happening when you've gone to the cloud, now you're going WD, you still need to go in and monitor, right? So these guys, they can look uh, and actually do profiling on either AMD or NVIDIA uh, because they are uh, agnostic on any GPU vendor. And here they are uh, able to uh, give in insights to the graphics resorting supporting uh, GPU and uh, for, for, for assessments. Um, they can also go in and, and look at utilization with dashboard viewing, uh, where they look at uh, what the application is using GPU core and over time. And this is this example here, it's Google Chrome, who's using it. So they can go in and, and look at the, the, the patterns. So that's that's pretty awesome. They can also look at, at users and machines and applications uh, with the GPU and how they are uh, getting utilized with core, core and memory. Um, or you can go in and filter based on, on thresholds. So you can go in and look at how the GPU is doing encoding and which GPU you're working with and which user it was, which process it was. So it gives you a pretty good insights on, especially when you have, you know, multiple people working in, in large environments, that data can be quite, you know, that data is not available by default in, you know, in the analytics, you need to get that data. And the only data you can get it is by using these third party software tools. That's the way to do it. Um, they can also look at the, the strategy can also look at the, the endpoint, uh, because actually you're doing uh, decoding on the endpoint, right? Uh, so that's important that you also capture that kind of data. You know, do I need a high-end uh, endpoint? Uh, because potentially it can also be the endpoint is not powerful enough uh, for when you are, are working. GEG Innovation, what they have, uh, they are supporting also NVIDIA. Uh, they don't support uh, AMD. Uh, so they can go in and look at uh, the GPU memory and the, 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 the compute utilization and they also have a process and so on. So they can also go into that kind of insights. And this is just an old, but I just want to show you guys they are actually able of doing it. And Lakeside as well, they have uh, the SysTrack visibility. Again, this, I'm sorry, it's an old slide. I haven't updated it with the latest uh, stuff in Azure, but they can do with the NV NVIDIA instances and they are able to see the GDI um, and DirectX and Open uh, GL uh, informations, but they again they only 
look at at, at that level with the with the um, with the Nvidia. And then um, yeah, let's see here. They have they have also some more information how you're doing GDI. But again, it's it's limited what what they're doing. But they still can give you some you know some insights. And I, I would say again, it's it's limited what you can do here. The other thing, uh, which is one of my, my to be honest, favorites, is in Uber Agent. So Uber Agent, they have this tool where you can look at uh, also uh, actually AMD, Nvidia, and even Intel as well, like Liquidware. And then they can can for even for assessment, you can capture existing machines, and then you can also capture the stuff in, in Windows Source and Desktop with, with GPUs, how your machines are performing, how they're utilizing over time, averages, um, or maximum values, and, and you know these super important values for when you're utilizing the environment. Do I need a larger instance? Am I already running out of the maximum, right? So this software can help you with, you know, do I need to go up with an instance that requires higher compute? And that's what this software is doing. So again, assessments is, and I keep on doing this, is quite important. A uh, good step is to, again to do it on, on physical, uh, and then the next step, of course, is to do it inside uh, Windows version desktop. Understand your applications, how they're behaving, because you might be surprised how many applications are using GPU. Applications like SAP, ERP applications are using GPU. Browsers are using GPU. Auto disk are using GPU. This is just some share information I want to give you guys uh, with the healthcare client. In SAP, that GPU were using GPU, and without a GPU, they were performing, they were actually working slower. And that means this is mission critical users who are working, right? And it's so critical that by aiming to give them a GPU, they're able to get the data quicker. And this is just an ERP application. So it's so important that you go in and check your application as well. If it's certified with your GPU vendor, make sure it's uh, certified uh, for, for especially also for multi-session and then compare it with local instances. So if you don't know if an application is working correctly in WD, then test it down on a local machine, compare it there. Understand how your applications are behaving in single session and in multi-session. And I'm almost done here. So one of the last thing I just want to say, the endpoint is also so important that you have the right endpoint for, for doing the WD experience, right? Because this compute, it all depends, you know, what you have with user input. You know, the bigger screens you go into, multiple 4Ks, you know, 16Ks, or potentially even beyond, right? This monster of decoding is, is so important that it's not just at the VMs that needs to do something, it's also the endpoints that needs to do something. So some of the resources, again, I just wanted to, to catch up. You have here, if you want to set up the NVIDIA instance or the AMD instances, you can uh, follow these resources and my presentation, of course, will be shared. So I thank you, sir, guys, so much for being in my, my, my session. I hope you guys learned something new. It was uh, fun for me. Thanks, guys. And I'm open for questions if there's anybody. <laughs>